Welcome to Generative Artificial Intelligence. We start this video by explaining how to distinguish between generative AI and traditional machine learning. Then we provide a formal definition for generative artificial intelligence and end the video with some examples of generative AI. Here, we're showing two key approaches in artificial intelligence, traditional machine learning and generative artificial intelligence. The top image shows traditional machine learning. Here, the model learns from data with labels attached to it. What it does is it figures out the link between the features of the data and their corresponding labels. This understanding is then used to make educated guesses on new data it hasn't seen before. Now, the bottom part of the image shows something a bit different. The generative AI model. Instead of just figuring out the relationship between inputs and outputs, it digs deeper. It focuses on the complex pattern in the content. This understanding of pattern is what gives it the power to create new and realistic content on its own. This could be anything, a poem, a news article, a picture, or even a music composition. So you see, generative AI brings a new creative angle to the huge world of AI. The nature of the output plays a crucial role in differentiating between generative AI and other models. Traditional models typically produce categorical or numerical outputs, such as whether an email is a spam or not, or predicting sales figures. On the other hand, generative AI can produce outputs like written or spoken language, images, or even audio, reflecting its ability to generate content that mimics reality. We can imagine it like this mathematically. If this equation isn't something you've seen recently, here's a quick reminder. The equation y equals f of x computes the outcome based on varying inputs. y symbolizes the result from the model. F stands for the function we use in the calculation. And what about X? That represents the input or inputs used in the equation. So in simple terms, the model's output is a function of all the inputs. The key here is understanding the nature of the output Y as a function of inputs X. Traditional models generally produce numerical outcomes, while generative AI models can map those numerical values to different forms of information, making them able to generate complex responses such as natural language sentences or images and videos. To summarize at a high level, the traditional, classical, supervised and unsupervised learning processes Take training code and label data to build a model. Depending on the use case or problem, the model can give you a prediction. It can classify something or cluster something. The distinction lies in the application. Traditional models make predictions, classify, or cluster data, while generative AI models are more versatile creating a wide range of content forms. The generative AI method can work with training code, labeled data, and unlabeled data of all kinds to construct what we call a foundation model. This foundation model can then produce new content, such as text, code, images, audio, video, and so on. Generative AI's power lies in its ability to ingest diverse data types, including unlabeled data, to build models that generate fresh content, which extends beyond traditional models' capabilities.
We've come a long way, moving from traditional programming to neural networks and now to generative models. In the old days of traditional programming, we had to manually input the rules to differentiate a cat. We had to embed specific rules into the program. It was something like if it's an animal with four legs, two ears, fairy, and shows a liking for yarn and catnip, then it's probably a cat. And we had to write all of that in a programming language and not natural language. In the wave of neural networks, we could show the network images of cats and dogs, then ask, is this a cat? The network would likely respond with a prediction, it is a cat. So we can see that neural networks allow for more nuanced decision making by training on examples, which is an evolution from hard coding rules. In the generative wave, we can produce our own content, such as text, images, audio, video, etc. Models like Palm or Pathways Language Model, Lambda, Language Model for Dialog Applications, and GPT, Generative Pre-trained Transformer, consume vast amounts of data from diverse sources, including the internet to construct foundation language models, which can be utilized simply by asking a question, whether typing it into a prompt or verbally talking into the prompt itself. So if we ask, what's a cat? It can give us everything it has learned about the cat. Generative AI boosts user interaction, turning users from mere spectators to active creators. Models like Palm, Lambda, and GPT stand out. They're trained on large data sets and provide smart, context-aware answers. This focus on the user makes generative AI attractive for a range of different applications. Now, let's provide our formal definition. What is generative AI? Generative AI is a type of artificial intelligence that creates new content based on what it has learned from existing content. The process of learning from existing content is called training and results in the creation of a statistical model when given a prompt. AI uses the model to predict what an expected response might be and this generates new content. The emphasis here is on the inherent ability of generative AI to learn and create. Unlike traditional models, which predict based on pre-established relationships, generative AI focuses on understanding the underlying structure of the input data. After training, the model can generate unique responses or content which significantly broadens the applications and capabilities of AI systems. Essentially, it learns the underlying structure of the data and can then generate new samples that are similar to the data it was trained on. So let's see what is the difference between language models and image models. Generative language models learn about patterns in language through training data. Then, given some text, they predict what comes next. Generative image models produce new images using techniques like diffusion. Then, given a prompt or related imagery, they transform random noise into images or generate images from prompts. Let's dig a little deeper into each of them. As previously mentioned, Generative language models focus on grasping the inherent structure of pattern within the data. They then leverage these learned patterns to generate novel responses or content, which often closely resemble the original data. These characteristics make large language models an exceptional example of generative AI's potential. A generative language model takes text as input 
and can output more text, an image, audio, or decisions. For example, under the output text, question answering is generated, and under output image, a video is generated. So large language models are a type of generative AI because they generate novel combinations of text in the form of natural sounding language. We also have generative image models, which take an image as input and can output text, another image, or video. For example, under the output text, you can get visual question answering which is a task in computer vision that involves answering questions about an image. While under output image, an image completion is generated. And under output video, an animation is generated. Like we mentioned before, generative language models learn about patterns and language structures through their training data. And then when given some text, they try to predict what comes next. So in a sense, generative language models can be seen as pattern matching systems, honing their ability to discern patterns from the data presented to them. Now that we provided the formal definition of generative artificial intelligence, let's end this video with some examples of generative AI. Here is an example of Google search autocomplete feature. Based on things it learned from its training data, it offers predictions of how to complete this sentence. Cats hate, and some of the suggestions are, cats hate the smell of, cats hate water, cats hate cucumbers. Here's the same example using BAR, which is a language model that is trained on a massive amount of text data and is able to communicate and generate human-like text in response to a wide range of prompts and questions. So when I use the prompt, cats hate, it answers, cats hate a lot of things, but some of the most commons include, and then a list of things that it thinks cats would hate. And the same prompt using GPT-4 produces this response. Cats hate. Cats can express dislike or discomfort in response to a variety of situations, objects, or behaviors. Below are some of the things that cats typically dislike. And list some of the things that it thinks cats would hate. Similar to BART, GPT-4 is also a language model trained on a massive amount of text data and is able to communicate and generate human-like text in response to a wide range of prompts and questions. Now, let's look at some examples of image generation. We use the same prompt on three different AI tools. The prompt is a cat surrounded by things cats hate. If we try this prompt on DALL-E, which is an AI image generator that is built by OpenAI, the same company that built GPT, we get this result. We can also try it on Adobe Firefly text to image generator. And these are some of the results that we get from Firefly. We can also try Canva text to image application. And it provides some examples of what it thinks is appropriate in response to our prompt. Please keep in mind that here we used a very minimalistic prompt just to show that even without providing much context, we can still produce results that are more or less relevant. We would get a much better result if our prompt included more detail and followed a solid structure. This points out to the importance of prompt design and prompt engineering, which we cover later on in this section. In the next video, we will talk about transformers, a technology that made all of this possible. See you in the next one.